Whoa. What happened to you? <laughs> oh, I love it. There are times when I like to ask people, how's that working out for you? And they go, well, what do you mean? So, you know, life. How's that working out for you? Well, good, because they don't really know where I'm coming from. And I just kind of want to know, like, hey, how's life working out for you? Are you happy with it? Are you sad? Are you depressed? Are you miserable? Are you kind of like beat down? Or are you beat up? Or are you heading in the wrong direction? Are you enjoying what you're doing? Or are you just flat out miserable? <laughs> so, frankly, people tell me they're miserable. I ask them, well, how's that working out for you? Do you, do you like where you're at? Because <laughs> if you don't, maybe you ought to change. You know, that's kind of what God asked everyone when he ran into them. Hey, how's that working out for you? You know, what do you... What did you do with the law? You know, well, you know, we kind of, we kind of made it into this really structured kind of physical thing, you know, and we, we we sat up these rules and regulations that you know we live by. So Jesus says, "Well, how's that working out for you? you? Any closer to God? Well, not really. You know, I haven't heard from Him in about oh, I don't know, forty or fifty years, huh? Hey, God, you been talking to them? Oh, they ain't listening. Okay, I got you." You kind of get the picture here? How's it working out for you? Is life really working for you? Or is it just kind of like you're existing, going on with the kind of day-to-day -day routines? You know, you know, going through the motions, you know, kind of like living it but not really loving it. Or kind of like buying for yourself, doing for yourself, getting for yourself, doing yourself, you know. And then one day you wake up and you look at yourself and you go... What happened? <laughs> well, to answer your question, I didn't like it. So I changed it. Yeah, you know, my do. Yeah, you know, changed it. I kind of sat down, you know, and I had this little tiny, little kind of cheapo, oh, I don't know, Razor. <laughs> kind of got it for like, I think, 12 bucks. <laughs> Made in China. What else? <laughs> That's what you do when you're poor in spirit or poor, period. You kind of buy cheap stuff. So I got this little razor, you know, and it charges up, you know. And I didn't bother to check and see if it was charged up. So I just went ahead and you know, took it and zzzz, used it to just cut back, you know, because it's got one of those little combing things, you know, where you just kind of like comb through and it cuts evenly for you. Well, it went right straight through the first time, you know, and one stroke went through, cut it nice and even, and it died. And I went, my wife's going to be home in about an hour, and I want to get this done so I can clean up the mess. Well, it didn't happen that way. That's what life does. Sometimes things don't happen the way you think they will. Then you kind of stuck with the consequences. Hmm, so how'd that work out for me? Well, you see, I plugged in the razor, you know, and I kind of left it overnight, and now it's all charged up. But you see, in the meantime, I was in a hurry, so I wanted to hurry up and fix it. So I got out a pair of scissors, you know, and I started grabbing it. And just cut away. Because you see, I'm not too worried about the way I look. Maybe you are. Maybe you... have a certain aura about you, a certain look, you know, kind of. You Botox it, <laughs> you know, or you medicate it like crazy, you know, or take all the vitamins that you possibly can so that you're wired and inspired. Yes, it's God, all right. Guess what? I got all my energy drinks in me. It's the spirit of God. Really, really, really. You know what it is? You know what it is? You know what it is? Right. How's that working out for you? How's your Botox working? How's your vitamins working? How's your energy drinks working? <laughs> I can tell you how God's working. For me, cool. Because you see, when I cut all my hair off, you know, I kind of went, oh man, I like that. Boy, but it doesn't look quite even. So I looked in the back of the mirror. Oops. Uh-oh. Honey, can you help me? Because you see, that's what help meets do. They help each other. 
kind of nice to have a wife, you know, when you can, you know, ask her to help you, and she says no, no, because <laughs> depending upon your relationship, she might tell you no. But you see, that's what I like about how it's working out for me, because my life, I could ask her to help me, so I did. I said, honey, I need some help. She goes, what did you do? I said, well, you see the razor? I went, and uh, it died, so then I worked at it. She says, okay. She didn't say much, you know, and she went and found some other scissors, <laughs> a little sharper. Started snip, snip here, snip, snip there. Well, she didn't do snips. She did long cuts. So it was like, whoa, whoa long cuts. I think I'm going to pay the price. Of course, I'd already messed it up, so we were just kind of fixing it. So she says, well, do you want to go down to the barber? I said, oh, oh I ain't going out in public like this. I'd rather just be on the Internet where millions of people can see me instead of going out in the public where only a few people can see me. Made perfect sense to me. <laughs> so... As I sat there in the bathroom, waiting for her to cut back the back of my head and the neck, you know, and stuff, you know, I said, well, Lord, you know, this is one way for me to get that hat I always wanted. I kept praying for it because I wanted one of those, you know, you know, the new styles. It's kind of like, you know, Mr. Cool, you know, the guy with the goatee, you know, and he puts on the hat, you know, and he's got the suit and the routine, and he's like, oh, oh, ah, mm, look at me, I'm sharp. Now I can go get one of those hats and be cool. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Without any hair on my head, I am cool. <laughs> it's cold out. Funny how that works. But when you're somebody like me, because I got more hair on my chest than I do on my head right now, I can grow hair anywhere, like ears, nose, you know, eyebrows, knuckles, back, you name it, man. I got hair growing everywhere. <laughs> Eat your heart out, Greg Glory. <laughs> I always like to tell people that. You know, it's because, like, if they knew Greg Glory, Greg used to have hair, like, everywhere. You know, I mean, he was, like, one massive amount of giant hair. And they went bald. <laughs> so I like to tease people that I sort of know about, you know, growing hair, because believe me, I'm sure that he grows hair where he doesn't want to grow it now. But having said that, I like to ask people in their life, you know, how's it working out for you? You know, how, how are things going? Because if they're not going the way you want them to, or they're not going the way that you think they should, maybe you should change it, you know, try it. I did, you know, I know my hair will grow back, I'm not worried about that. You know, I can put on a hat, look like a military. Yes, sir. <laughs> Report for duty, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> really? But I wanted to get it all off because you know I'm kind of tired of messing with it. So that's what I do is when I don't want to mess around with something, I get rid of it. Maybe you should think about that. Are there things that you kind of like tired of? Do you just want to get out of your life? Get rid of it. If it works out, praise the Lord. You know, it worked for you. But if it doesn't work for you, don't do it. You know, like, how's that sin working out for you? You know, is it is it really kind of that much fun? You know, because when people tell me that, you know, they want to go do something, I say, well, okay, you go do it, I'll go that way, because you know what? <laughs> I want to watch and see how it's working out for you. Hmm, how is that working out for you? You getting what you wanted out of that? <laughs> no? Ooh, I think I know why. I think the Bible said so. <laughs> Ooh. Maybe that's why we read it and study it and kind of like listen to what God has to say. Because when I don't know what to do, I read what he says to do. Now, I think that's why he gave me a Bible was because he wanted me to read it so I didn't have to go through all these kind of messed up ideas that I got, like, you know, shaving myself. Every time I give myself a haircut, you know, somehow it isn't quite as good as going to somebody who knows what they're doing. Because when you don't know what you're doing, guess what you turned out like? You mean I should ask somebody who knows what they're doing? Ooh, what a novel idea. I thought I could just figure it out on my own. You know, like life. Just go with it. Do what I want. 
figure it out as I go along. You know, kind of like everybody else is doing. You know, they don't seem to know what they're doing, so I kind of do that. Really. How's that working out for you? Me, personally? Kind of like it, you know? Kind of. When I can read it. Oh! Well, that makes sense. A good name is better than precious ointment. And the day of death than the day of one's birth. Wow! That's cool. Because, you know, when I die, I'm moving into eternity. And I don't have to deal with all this garbage down here. Because I'm living it up there. Ooh, I like that. That's kind of cool. Thank you, God. That's a neat word. So, you see... If it's working for you, good. Go do it. I'm serious. You know, if if your life is working for you, don't even bother with me. You know, don't bother with these videos. Don't watch video. Don't go to church. Don't do whatever you're doing. You know, go go do your thing. Because until you're ready, no offense, you ain't gonna listen. Until you actually find out it ain't working for you, you're gonna go after what you want to do anyway. So why bother? Go do it. Go figure it out. You know, go play around. Go act stupid, to put it bluntly. But, you know, it's kind of like my mama used to say. She used to say, stupid is as stupid does. And, you know, she'd kind of look around and say, maybe not in the same words, because she was a little more sarcastic <laughs> or blunt and maybe a little more crass. But she'd say, how's that working out for you? Or, <laughs> Something like, you did it. <laughs> well, thank God my mother's dead because she's not looking around and seeing what everybody's doing because if she did, she would be going... <laughs> and she doesn't do this, but she'd be doing that. She'd be kind of like, you know, uh-uh, that ain't right. So, I'd just like to ask you, you know, kind of at times, you know, when we do our videos, you know, how's that working out for you? You know what I mean? How's it working? You know? How you doing it? You know? How's how's God working? How's that God thing working out for you? Because if it ain't, maybe Jesus is the way. Maybe Jesus will work out for you. But if he doesn't, hey, throw it away. Try something else. Because I'll be honest with you. The only thing that works out for me is God. And the only thing that works for me is Jesus. I've tried everything else. Don't work out for me. Kind of works out like this haircut. It may look good if you're not wearing glasses <laughs> and you can't see. It may feel good, yeah, sort of, until it gets a little cold. It may grow back in time. But in the meantime, I think I'm going to suffer the consequences of it. You might have to do the same if it ain't working out for you. Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. When I consider your heavens and the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? The works of the Lord are great and sought out of all of them that have pleasure therein. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips, when I remember thee upon my bed, and meditate on thee in the night watches. You know, that's kind of what I always wonder when I ask people, how's that working out for you? When they lay down to go to bed at night, they got a clear conscience or a guilty conscience? Are they trying to forget what they did that day? Or are they trying to think about, hey, what did God say? This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Kind of like, you know, there must be something good in it because it can't all be bad. So maybe I missed what he was trying to tell me to do in the day that I should have did it. Because otherwise, when you don't do what God says to do, then it's doo-doo. <laughs> it really is. It kind of stinks. And you can smell it. So, I don't know about you, but 
for me. It works. I'm working it. I enjoy it. You want to know how it's working out for me? Grace. Because <laughs> I can put this hat on or I can leave it off and it doesn't bother me a bit. Because I kind of like not having all that extra hair and that do to worry about whether I do do it or didn't do it. Because now my do is done. Now I can just leave it alone. Maybe that's what you need to do. Maybe you could just kind of like go back to God, talk to Him about it, and say, You know, Lord, this ain't working out so good. Maybe you could do something with it. And just like my wife helped me, maybe God can help you. I think so. Maybe you should ask Him. <laughs>